Hey, who are you texting? Oh, your ex-girlfriend? Put the fucking phone down! And listen up. This video is not only going to help you, or, excuse me, it's going to make you get over your ex in time, but it's also going to allow you to find out what it is that's going to make you never need a significant other to be happy again. So, for starters, uh, this video does pertain more to guys getting dumped, or guys who are currently dumped, monkey branched from, cheated on, whatever the case may be. You you got fucked over by a woman, and not this doesn't necessarily make her a bad person, but that's mainly what this video does. Uh, it also pertains to one-itis, and a woman may be, definitely may be able to get something out of it too. But I'm just, you know, for the sake of the video, I'm going to use everything in reference to the guy getting dumped by the woman. So, if that makes sense. Alright. Um, let me see. First off, that relationship. Bet it was great, huh? All those memories, all those times you had together. The cute little way she would look at you when you, you know, lay down on the bed. Holding hands, going to the movies. The sex. Passionate and sweaty. It was great, wasn't it? Well, it's over now, and um, what that relationship did for you is it quite literally fulfilled so many biological needs at once. That's what it did. And um, right now, you're going through, you might have heard this before, you're going through a detox, quite literally, like as if that person was a drug, you're going through a cat, what the hell? you're going through a detox. So, that's what we need to accept right off the bat is it's quite it's like an addiction um and and you're in rehab now and they there's no there's no drugs in rehab. You ain't going anywhere. So, right now, your reality on this massive and huge and relatively relativity to us not the universe, huge earth is them. Your whole reality, everything you're built upon, all your validation, everything is built strictly on them right now. And that is because they gave you all those need fulfillments. That's exactly what happened. So your reality is them. Your validation, everything that made you feel alive is all in their hands. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin to recenter. And by recentering, we take that split, um, what have you, uh, that feeling of, you know, two minds connecting and we bring it back to our own mind. That's what we're going to do. Um, if you've seen Fight Club, probably my favorite movie, there's a scene at the end where Tyler Durden is holding the gun and he has the narrator, you know, scared and then he's in control of the narrator. The narrator, who knows that Tyler Durden is simply an image of his own, you know, mind, because he's a fucking nut, realizes that Tyler Durden isn't in fact holding the gun. The narrator himself is holding the gun. Um, so what you can take out of that is that is a big metaphor for what's going on right now. Your ex holds the gun, but really you'll find out with time or right now that you actually have the gun. So... Remember, think about 7 billion people in this world, all different kinds of religions. People believe in fucking a pasta guy, for crying out loud. The first thing you need to accept and realize is that there are tons and tons and millions of billions of belief systems. Right now you are stuck on one. One belief system that you need this person to be happy and to be fulfilled. We're going to rewire that. Boop. That's what we're going to do here. So, step one, you've heard it a million times, but you probably don't listen. No contact. No contact. What if I just want to look at her picture? No contact. Well, she texted me, no contact. None, 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 none. That doesn't just mean communicating with this person. 
That means looking at their Facebook, looking at pictures, especially means looking at like sexual memories and stuff like that because yes that is absolutely it's scientifically and biologically one of the reasons you get attached to this person especially as a man that chemical releases up here when you are getting intimate so you need to stay away from those um, those those pictures and videos if you have them and even the memories which are really hard to escape and that's why you find yourself thinking about them even though you're masturbating to other women on the internet or whatever you still somehow manage to find a way and the funny thing about that is you can find much better looking women to pleasure, pleasure yourself to, yet you still think about them. Hmm, think about that for a second. All right, so no contact, nothing, there is no, I, every single time some, well, what if this, what if that, what if this, no exceptions, none, none. If you, if you can think of a, a, a way to contact them, okay, yes, all right, one exception, sorry, my bad getting something really really expensive back or something like that or, or a, a complete emergency yes you need to contact them get that stuff back but if it has anything to do with the relationship her trying to be friends uh... happy birthday uh, i don't want to be rude and who cares if you're rude this is not about them anymore this is about you and your healing no contact is the first foremost and most important thing that's going to happen in this healing process no contact. They have to not exist anymore. That is the key. Remember what I said about belief systems and reality? They become a part of your non-reality. They just go away. They evaporate. Oh, you don't want them to leave. Uh, we'll get to that. Anyway, so no contact is the first step and probably the most important. And now we need to accept the pain. Pushing ego aside, uh, I don't want to cry over a person, blah, blah, blah. Well, you're watching this video, you're in pain, you're hurt, so obviously something's wrong. Accept the pain. You have lost something that meant something, that gave you a value, that gave you a validation, that made you feel alive. You have lost something. You're in loss. You're in pain. That's okay. We lose things. This is a part of life. Um, you can cry. Oh my God! What you can cry? It is okay. These are embracing the emotions. This is the this is that is a literally a tool. Think of it as a tool, to allow you to build the callus and to get over this person. It's okay. It's all right. Cry it out. Just don't let anybody see you. You'll be all right. So we're gonna accept the pain, and um, we're gonna stop wanting sympathy from the ex because since they're your validation, you need to stop wanting them to feel bad for you or them to give you some kind of sign or, or whatever all right this is this is like I said we're recentering we're taking the gun back this is all about you now it's a really hard concept to grasp at first but once you do that's where the path begins so moving on from there like I said you're gonna um, you're gonna own your pain um, so now it's time to start from the bottom and then get here um, we're gonna start. We're gonna start from the bottom. So we're kind of. We're essentially. We're gonna. We're gonna break down, uh, pretty much all the way emotionally, so that we can rebuild. And just like a muscle fiber, this bitch gonna be twice as big, three times as big when you're done with it. So um, it's it's time to rebuild. So with that, uh, back to the emotion things. You're gonna flow with these emotions. But the most important thing with these emotions is that you are going to. Be aware of them. You're going to understand why they're happening. Why am I sad? Well, you had something and you lost it. We need to delve a little deeper. Why, did, why is this so important to me? Is there nothing else that's important to me? You know, what, why? And, uh, or you're thinking about them with someone else. So why? You, you know, you'll get to a point where you're truly actually over them, yet some, them, the thought of them with someone else just destroys you. Well, is there some ego involved in there? So what we're going to do is we're gonna flow with the emotions. We're gonna to, we're gonna to totally feel them all out, and we're gonna every time we have one and it gets real deep, we're gonna logically that logically means your your conscious action, what you have control of, regardless of what your emotions are telling you to do, like contact her. Logically, we're gonna make the right decision. We're gonna stay calm and we're gonna think and feel with that emotion. We're gonna feel with it. Can't even hold all these feels. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna feel with that emotion. And we're going to think, why, why is this happening? We're going to be aware of it. We're going to feel how it flows through our arms or our throat. And we're going we're gonna to sit there with it. And we're going to try to, we're going to understand why it's happening. 
we're gonna we're gonna be aware of it. We're gonna separate the conscious mind with the emotions. See what I'm saying? So every time it happens, you're gonna you're gonna be there with it, but you're gonna learn the power of conscious action. Conscious action being sitting there, being aware of it, accepting that it's there, accepting that you're hurt, but not doing anything drastic, not doing anything that's going to set you back. Only doing things that are going to make you better. So, you're going to flow with it. Now, now that you have the concept of no contact, uh, owning the pain, recentering, flowing with the emotions, next up, we're going down the rabbit hole of knowledge, baby. Knowledge is power. You've heard it before. Now we're going to really learn what it's like to become aware of what's going on in our minds. We're going to we're going to hit the self-improvement books, the self-help, the brain power, the all the all the things that make us consciously aware of what's happening, the knowledge. We're going to talk to people, we're going to learn about other situations. We're going to we're going to open everything up and everything's going to come so clear and even though it's still going to hurt, and you're still going to think about what they're doing and it's still going to be shitty. The awareness is going to bring you out of it 10 times faster than if you were to just keep checking her Facebook and seeing her making out with that new dude. And um, on a tangent, if she's coming back, it's probably because it didn't work out with a new person. Learn that one the real hard way, uh, just so you know. And, and that's going to be one of those things you're going to have to learn the hard way because you're going to hear it here, but you're not going to listen. But um, wait, you are going to listen. You are going to listen. You are going to listen. Affirmation. All right. So. Relate to the other situations. Learn, 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 learn. It's going to give you that awareness. That awareness is key. Remember that. All right, next up, you got to create new expansive thoughts and new experiences. Now, literally, we're going to overwrite the data that is your ex. The ex created so many strong and powerful memories. We need to create new expansive thoughts and memories that are going to overwrite those. That, and that coincides with the no contact. And those are going to go hand in hand as you over as she becomes because staying in contact. Remember that's going to reinforce those memories. So going no contact on top of expansive thoughts, new experiences, she s slowly just fades away into the mist, and that's what we want. All right. So new expansive thoughts. What are those? Well, new expansive thoughts is finding out what you can bring to this world, finding out what was going to make you happy, what's going to make you a stronger man, what's going to be your path, your you're gonna, what you're going to do to push your limits, your potential. Mind expansive thoughts, like really, what is out there for me? There's a, It's a massive world. What can I do? What can I get into? What can I, uh, networking and, and what can I connect with? And and so there's so many things to think about that's positive energy and like I'll quote Les Brown operate out of your imagination not your past because operating out of your past is going to just keep you clung to the past to the memories that bring pain alright <clears throat> so then on top of the new expansive thoughts you got the new the new memories you're gonna create and to do that you're gonna kinda become a yes man a little bit you got friends you, hopefully you have friends but if not uh, become a yes man. Uh, don't turn down opportunities. You see something like a flyer for uh, for volunteering or uh, rock climbing or, or whatever. Go do those things. And stop caring if your ex is watching. Because I know you're going to be like, oh, look at me becoming this awesome person. I can't wait to make my ex jealous. If you're there, you ain't you, you don't have the concept yet. You're not recentered. You're going to get to a point where you don't care if she sees or not. And there's this, there's this narcissistic write-up in you. You're, you're like, the only reason you're becoming so powerful and so awesome is you're going to show her. Oh, you're going to make her miss what you were. You're going to make her know what she missed out on, aren't you? Aren't you? Stop. Let go. This isn't about proving anybody wrong. This isn't about showing the hater, being her, whatever. This isn't about that. This is about fully benefiting from what this pain will bring you. As Joe Rogan said, a breakup, the pain and the deep, deep, deep seated pain that a breakup brings is almost like an evolutionary mechanic to make you find and become the person you are meant to be in this world. That's what you're going to do with this. And you start realizing that the potential that this, that what this can be for you, you become three times the person. So, 
new expansive thoughts, memories, overwrite the data. New hobbies, self-discovery, finding out what you want to do in life because you need to find out what validates you as a person. That is going to be the biggest thing, uh, aside from no contact. But learning how to be your own person and not letting a person validate you is going to be the biggest deal. <clears throat> All right, moving on. All right, this is a very important thing, so listen up. And I've already made the video longer than I wanted to, but um, if, you're, if you're in pain, you're probably still watching. Um, you got to stop loving the pain. you got to stop loving the pain. Well, what do you mean? I don't love the pain. Well, it sucks. I'm trying to get over it. Mm, you think so, but you love the pain more than you think right now. Um, loving the pain essentially keeps you clung on to the memories, and there's a reason why you do it. Now, have you ever been like no contact? You're doing all the right steps, all the right procedures to get over here, get over her. You feel yourself getting better. You feel yourself getting better, and the next thing you know, you're like, "Oh, today it sucks again." All of a sudden, it just fucking sucks again. You know why that happens? Because as you feel yourself getting better, you get afraid of that. You're afraid of that healing, because once you get better, you're by yourself again. So you cling back to the pain which brings back all those memories of being with her again because you would rather feel that pain than nothing at all at this time you would rather feel that pain than to, than to just have that single life and and just everything feels dull and there's nothing there stop loving the pain you're addicted to it just like you were addicted to her now you're addicted to the pain it's another process of getting over it this whole thing, the whole concept is really going to boil down to really letting go because you are in view of your whole world, your existence, nobody else. But yet you still think she and other people are the validation for you in your existence. They're not. So stop loving the pain. Um, loving this pain is usually a factor of making excuses for not wanting to do the work that it takes to become the type of man that doesn't need her anymore. You're making excuses for not being able to go down the path of self-discovery, figure out what you know is important to you, what's going to make you feel awesome in this world, what's going to make you feel validated as a person from your own work. That's what you're making excuses for. Stop doing that. Knock it off, man. Come on. What can you bring this world? What can you do? What positive energy can you bring to other people's lives? You know, this very video. Well, this is this is this is this is warming to me, man. This is I like this. I could bring one person out of a slump and I've done my job with this okay so stop clinging to it as an excuse to not have to to think about what's right for you and what's gonna make you a man that's gonna attract better quality people and better quality woman in your life anyway trust me she's not that special believe that so um, so when you when you cling back to that pain you go through that roller coaster again uh, it's going to put you back down that spiral that's going to take you away from those expansive thoughts and the ability it's going to it's going to hinder it's it makes you freeze up like the pain makes you freeze up it makes you not want to do anything it's you're so clung to it that you can't have those expansive thoughts you can't read the books you can't go hang out with friends and make new experiences you can't do those things because you still love it once again we're going back to that awareness that awareness that you still love it and this awareness is key um be alone, man. Just just be alone for a while. You'll you'll realize it's you have time, but this this being alone is gonna make you come out better. I promise you that. All right, now let's move on to synthetic happiness. Um, now this is a concept by Dan Gilbert of TED Talks, and synthetic happiness is essentially the correspondent or the uh, what's it called the. I don't know. It's synthetic happiness is the, the opposition, or not necessarily opposition, but the other half of real happiness. Real happiness being um, the needs on the, the hierarchy of needs uh, being met. So like the natural needs that we have biologically being met and you know continuing on up the pyramid, that's more like the real happiness. That's like if you were spawned into fame and money and woman and friends and like just magically and all those needs were met you would feel that real happiness but I guarantee that wouldn't last either um, but synthetic happiness is kinda like creating your own happiness out of uh, situations uh, that happened to you so you lost this person 
and re the delusional side, but we're, that's okay because we're going to become delusional. Who gives a shit? It's all our reality. Remember, tons of belief systems out there. You're in one right now. Uh, the delusional side, or the the one that the non-delusional side right now is going to say, uh, I can't fool myself. I that being with her was better. It was better. The 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 memories, the fun, the sex, everything. It was. How can I sit here and, and honestly believe that I'm better off without her? That's bullshit. Well, no. Because what synthetic happiness is going to do is going to take all the concepts in this video and it's going to look towards the future of I'm better off because of what I'm going to gain from this breakup, what I'm going to become from this breakup. That's what synthetic happiness is. And as the Dan Gilbert says, the studies have proven synthetic happiness is the exact same thing as real happiness. It's just this, this ability we have to make the best out of situations. And that's exactly what you're going to do. So, there's a concept to ponder, and um, you're going to end up believing that you are better off. And thus, you'll, uh, you'll become three times a person. All right, uh, next up, affirmations. Um, affirmations are, you can write them down, uh, whatever you want to write down, whatever you need that's going to make you feel better. Um, it's basically a list of things you're going to write as if they're already true. And you're going to read them every single day and you're going to read them loud and proud. I am confident. I am better off without this person. I will discover what my path and what I am meant to do in this life is. I will keep hitting the gym. I will improve my body and mind every day. I will be aware of my emotions but, not, uh, will, but will logically act in the best way for me. S write those things down. And read them every single day. Some of you may think this is a crock, but have you tried them? Mm, no. And guess what? Even if it is a placebo, that goes right back to synthetic happiness. You are making yourself believe that these things are helping you. So just like a sugar pill, it's actually going to help you. Imagine that. So stop worrying about if things are crocks or fakes or phonies or whatever. Think about all the religious people, and I'm not religious, but I have nothing against religious people because that's their belief, that's their belief system, and you know what? That validation that, that makes them happy, they, some of them become really good people. Now, there's some, you know, there's some twisted religious people out there. I get it. But a lot of those people really feel awesome all the time because they feel that presence of God in them, and that's, that's awesome. That's their synthetic happiness. Great for them. I don't want to bring them down out of that. I don't want to take them you know, out of that world. As long as I can still connect with them in the ways that I need to and deal with them and they're not going to force their beliefs on me, good to go, man. Awesome for you. Awesome. My mother is super religious. And you know what? That religion, that belief, took her out of her alcoholism. Six years, seven years of alcoholism. No, six years, seven years clean. A life of alcoholism. And, 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 and you know, and I hate to put my mom's personal business on here, but it's a really good example. She poured the last bottle of of glass down of wine down the drain, the last glass of wine down the drain, just like that. It was, she was good, because of the her belief in God and religion. Like I said, I am not personally religious, but I I can I condone and I and I, I respect people that are. It doesn't matter to me. You can believe whatever the hell you want. No pun intended. Um, so affirmations are will be helpful to you. Try them out. If you don't feel like they're doing anything, whatever. But I I, I assure you. It's not something you feel and go, oh, they're working. It's something that, well, it takes a while, but one day you'll wake up and realize that they probably did help, or they they did help. Um, it it's a, another another note here to finish up, start wrapping up the film, is yes, it's hard, man. It's freaking so hard. Like you're thinking in your head right now, well, no, you no, you're not going what I'm going through. No, dude, so many people before you have, I have people watching have before it's very very hard like like body stiffness oh my god I can't freaking breathe hair in your arms hard we know dude we know but if you take the actions I gave you in this video I guarantee you you're gonna come out alive alright so we know it's hard alright now I'm gonna give you this juggernaut theory the juggernaut theory is basically now that you have this awareness you're gonna close your eyes close your eyes close your eyes now you see this, are you closing, you're not closing them, you're, you're looking at my face, close your eyes, alright, now that they're closed, you see this, you know the juggernaut helmet from X-Men, you see it sitting on um, like a big stone, and it's there, and what you're going to do, what you're going to do with this, this metaphor, is you're going you're gonna to put this freaking helmet on dude, 
and that that's what happens when this like I said back to the Joe Rogan mechanic you put this helmet on and it's it's crazy how once you really latch on to what's happening in this awareness and becoming your true self and self discovery in this rabbit hole it's like you once you get that momentum you can't stop even when the pain's gone you can't stop you just want to keep delving down that path and finding out how truly powerful you can become from the inside out and who you can inspire and who you can help around you that's what happens you're putting this helmet on and you're freaking hitting the ground running become the juggernaut right now starting now you can do it that um that pretty much concludes it man it's a long video um hope you enjoyed and hope you got something out of it you're gonna make it we're all gonna make it a uh, couple quick thanks um thank you shout outs my sister uh she's a couple years older than me she's been through the breakup she's been through the pain my sister was one of the biggest factors in getting over my last two relationships actually with which both led me down a very very dark and um ominous path but uh it came out three times each time three times a man each time juggernaut theory baby so my sister, uh, the RH section, relationship help section of the miscellaneous on the uh, bodybuilding.com forums. Lots of good information there. The no contact thread, big, big shout out there. Um, really good stuff on there. Really helped me through seeing other situations, relating to people, helping each other. It's good stuff on there, man. It's funny how the miscellaneous section is so like lots of trolls and just negative people. And you go in the RH section, everybody's just so encouraging and really there for each other. So it's good stuff. Um, Dan Gilbert for the TED Talks on Synthetic Happiness, and Joe Rogan, because that, that's a smart motherfucker right there, too. So uh, there's probably a lot more sources that I could I, I could thank for being able to put this video together, but those are some, some big names here. So um, time to get on that path, bro. Put your juggernaut helmet on and um, start discovering what you're going to offer to this world. You're going to make it. Good luck.